Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be talking about suicide prevention. This week is designated as Suicide Prevention Week. According to a 2020 report by the CDC, suicide rates among individuals aged 10 to 24 increased almost 60% from 2007 to 2018. With coronavirus and spotlight in the spotlight on social injustices, our youth are at an increased risk for mental health concerns, including suicidal thoughts and attempts. While there is no identified leading cause of suicide, there are many risk factors. Health risk factors may include pre-existing mental health conditions like depression, anxiety, or even a substance abuse disorder, or um, a diagnosis of a serious or terminal illness, a physical health condition like chronic pain. Other risk factors can be environmental, like a recent loss or tragedy, a divorce or separation, access to um, firearms or drugs, victims of abuse, sexual harassment, or even bullying, unemployment, or relationship problems. There are also historical factors that could put an individual at an increased risk for suicide, including previous suicide attempts, a family member dying by suicide, or a victim of child abuse or neglect. While these risk factors may put an individual at increased risk for suicide, individuals who actively, who play an active role in their recovery can live a fulfilling life. Now that we've reviewed the risk factors, I wanna share some protective factors. The more protective factors that an individual has, the less risk they are of attempting suicide. Some protective factors include access to health care, active participation in treatment, so the individual is not only enrolled in some type of treatment, but they're making and keeping their appointments and taking their medications as prescribed. A support system is also a protective factor, so this could include friends, family, loved ones, um, so support from the community, limited access to lethal means, such as guns or firearms. So this may look like an individual um, living at home where guns are kept in a gun safe and medications are kept in a medication lockbox. And also uh, a sense of purpose is a protective factor. So. Um, this individual would be able to uh, easily identify reasons for living or things that they're looking forward to or things that they want to accomplish in life. Now I'm going to share some warning signs. Because we don't really know what a person is feeling or thinking unless they tell us, I'm going to talk about some warning signs of things that an individual who may be in a crisis or thinking about wanting to harm or kill themselves, what they might say. They might actually say or tell somebody that they're thinking about killing themselves. They may um, make comments or mentions of feeling hopeless or helpless or even trapped. Um, they, may, they may say that they have no reason to live or they may not be able to identify reasons for living if you were to ask them. They may feel like, or they may say they feel like they're a burden on others, such as their family or friends. Maybe they might say that their uh, family would be better off without them. Um, or they may talk about um, the pain they feel and describe it as something, um, they may describe it as unbearable. 
And now I want to share some behaviors that may alert us to the fact that an individual may be in crisis or under a great deal of stress. These behaviors include um, increased substance use or um, beginning to use substances after a period of recovery, searching ways to die, withdrawing from activities, isolating from friends, family, loved ones. They may be having trouble sleeping, experiencing some kind of sleep irregular irregularities like sleeping too much or not sleeping enough. They may um, begin saying goodbye to people that they're close to in the form of a letter or um, a card or even just verbalizing it whenever they are around their family. Giving away prized possessions. Uh, and this may be something that, that you know is meaningful to them. It could be something um, as small as their favorite scrunchie or ball or even something more expensive like um, a piece of jewelry or family heirloom. You may also notice in individuals who are in crisis, you may notice that um, they're experiencing some mood swings or some other kind of significant change in behavior that's different from how they normally act. Um, they may also be experiencing fatigue. They may seem like they're tired a lot or, or not have much energy. You may notice them engaging in some impulsive or reckless behavior, like um, driving really fast, or um, also stockpiling pills. Um, stockpiling pills at, is when an individual doesn't take their medication as prescribed and as prescribed daily and instead saves the medication so that they have enough to overdose. So, so these are some examples of behaviors that you may notice in an individual who is um, thinking about having thoughts of um, wanting to harm or kill themselves. If you notice any of these warning signs or behavior clue, behavioral clues that I've shared today in an individual, I encourage you to ask them what's going on or what you can do to help. Or even if you feel comfortable, just go ahead and ask them if they're thinking about harming or killing themselves. And then when they begin talking to you, listen and try to be as non-judgmental as, as possible. Research actually suggests that asking someone if they're thinking about wanting to harm or kill themselves actually lowers their anxiety and opens the door for them to actually share what they're thinking or feeling going through, and that offers them hope. So offering hope in any form or, or action can save a life. So ask, listen, if someone does disclose to you that they are thinking about wanting to harm or kill themselves, stay with them until you can find help or help them get connected with help. In the description of this video, we've shared several resources where you can get help or also get more information about suicide prevention. I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with these resources and keep them handy. I also wanted to share that I'm a trained facilitator in QPR, which is a su suicide prevention training. It stands for Question, Persuade, Refer. This is a one hour training and if you're interested in getting additional training on suicide prevention, contact me. I'd love to set up a training for you or um, connect you with some additional resources. Thank you for joining today's session, and I hope you'll stay tuned for our upcoming sessions.